Okay, so today we are going to be doing a spoiler talk for Rhythm of War. So my goal, my plan, my dream was to wait until Corey finished listening to the audiobook for Rhythm of War so that we can do an in-depth discussion like we have in the other books. That didn't happen. He isn't in the mood to start a new book right now. He's really into podcasts and watches. He's gotten into watches and he's watching, watching a lot of watch videos. He wants to read it. He's excited to read it. He just doesn't, he wants, he wants a minute. He wants a minute. And I don't want to pressure him. So I'm going to do a, a short spoiler talk where I'm going to go more into depth on the three pros and three cons that I did in my spoiler free review so that you can get a little bit more what I was talking about without being restrained by not spoiling, spoiling things, but this is not going to be an in-depth discussion. I still plan to do that with Corey after he finishes reading it. So in this video, I'm going to go over my three pros and three cons, but I'm going to give a little bit more information. I'm probably going to lean into the cons a little bit more because the pros are super self-explanatory because what Sanderson does well, he does so well. Starting with my first pro, the details and Cosmere connections. So Sanderson is a detail guy. Oh my goodness, the man likes his details. And in this book in particular, he made so many Cosmere connections and so uh, Sanderson loves world building, right? He he can make a really big world and he can tell you every detail about that world. This book, in my opinion, was such a massive focus on world and plot and Oh my goodness, the deepening of the world that we got in this book, plus the number of Cosmere connections that came. And I think he did a really, really good job as far as those Cosmere connections go, because he did an excellent job of, of creating, um, of, of bringing those connections in, in a way that if you haven't, like if you haven't read Mistborn yet, and then Sanderson goes into pages and pages of details of how Fabrials work, you may not see the Mistborn magic connection because you haven't read Mistborn, but you're just learning something cool about magic systems. I love the way he did that. Plus his need to rename every character when they world hop means that when Kelsier shows up in this book, you may not notice that it's Kelsier, which by the way, I still haven't read Secret History. No, not, yeah, Secret History. I still haven't read Secret History, so I don't know why Kelsier's here. I don't understand how that happened, but I really need to read Secret History now because Kelsier's here and he's the leader of the Ghost Bloods. What? But even though I don't really know why, I'm excited about it and I'm thrilled to keep moving forward with his character in some way, shape, or fashion. My first con in the video was pacing, and I'll say this, this is my smallest con. This is more of a, eh, nitpick didn't work out for me, and less of a, I really didn't like this about the book, right? So I, I've, I've never fully connected with Sanderson's pacing. It's just a way that Sanderson and I don't, don't connect, and that's fine. Sanderson loves to dis to explain every detail about his world and about everything that's in his head about his books. Sometimes that means we get pages and pages of information on Fabrials or pages and pages of war tactics and discussing what they're what plan they're going to try to execute next. I don't need it. I don't need that much information on certain things. Uh, sometimes it means that I feel like his his plot lines go a little long. I really don't think there's a scene or a section of this book that I would just say cut it. It was useless. Uh, it, it's more of certain things I felt went on a little bit long, like the whole spa, spy plot line with Shallan and Pattern. Um, you know, I just didn't need it to go that long. I, I, I felt like the big reveal, the whodunit was clear pretty early on, and I didn't need that that much of who done it. Uh, Shadesmar in book three, I felt Shadesmar went on long in this book. Shades more, I didn't I didn't need that much of it. So it's more of trimming and and it's more of I just don't I don't need this much. Sanderson's always been an indulgent writer. He's always been a writer that just loves to dig into things. And I love him for that, but also sometimes I don't need as much of it. Uh, it's a preference thing. It's not that big of a deal. My next pro is the beginning and the end of the book. If you've read the book, you don't need me to elaborate on this. The beginning was so tightly paced and exciting and emotional. My goodness, from Kaladin getting um, taken out of the ranks by Dalinar in chapter 10. Chapter 10 was mean to me. 
to his dad kicking him while he's down, to Syl starting to forget things again and not being able to leave him, to Teft and all the struggles that he's going through and Cal trying to help him through them. My golly, it was a lot of emotion and a lot of excitement and so well paced in that first section. Same for the last. I have come to expect a lot out of Sanderson's endings, especially Stormlight endings. Especially after Oathbringer, I was thinking, what, what is what is book four gonna do? And I loved the ending he chose for book four because it was a lot slower than his endings usually are while still being so exciting. And I loved that he chose to set us up this much for book five. I mean, I kept I kept looking at the page count and and continuing to read and thinking how how is this going to fit in here and it turns out that the big face off is going to happen in the next book and I love that. I think Sanderson did such a great job of setting up for book 5 and I'm so excited for book 5 because all of the things that he has set up this is where we get a lot of the payoff and and just like it's gonna have an amazing opening sequence and I'm, I'm just really excited about that oh plus plus Tara Vangian is the new Odie Tara Vangian used Nightblood to kill Odium and became Odium I'm gonna have to edit this video I can't let Corey see me saying that that was so awesome I loved that. I didn't expect it. I think it was perfect. I have loved Tara Vangian's character from the first time we met him. I think he's so fascinating. I even said in my book three big long spoiler talk that I would have loved for book four to be Tara Vangian's book because I think he's so fascinating. And in book four he kept descending and descending and I was just thinking what are you gonna do with him for a whole nother book? I don't want to lose him. I don't want to kill him off at this point. I still want more of him but what can you do with him at this point? It's starting it's starting to get repetitive and it's starting to get nothing. And then he did this and I am so on board for it cannot wait. Okay, my second con was character movement. So this is going to take a little bit of explaining. First of all, obviously Kaladin is not who I'm talking about here. I said in the review that there were four main characters and I didn't feel like the four of them got enough movement for the number of pages that we had. So Kaladin obviously did. He had basic, I mean, he had a diehard plot. <laughs> he basically had a diehard plot. He had so many cool things happening with him and teaming up with Navani, oh my goodness, I loved it. But then you have our other four mains. Dalinar was barely in the book and didn't even really matter for the book until part five. Adolin had a good plot line but not very much page time with it and um, I have some complaints about that too which I'll get into. And Shalon, oh Shalon, I needed so much more from her. And again, I'll get into it more in my next con. Um, but what I wanna say here is, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I have a theory about the way Sanderson has structured the Stormlight Archive. So I mentioned this in my spoiler-free review. I'm a character reader. I, I, I really enjoy plot. I really enjoy world. All the Cosmere connections are cool to me. And I want all these things. But the thing that I want the most, the thing that I connect to the most, and the thing that's my favorite thing about this series is the characters. Book one was basically a character study. There was hardly any plot. It was all character. Book two was a really good balance between character and plot. Book three was primarily plot and world building with a big character study on Dalinar. Book two obviously had a character study on Shallan. But the other three of our mains took a big step back in book three and a spotlight shone on Dalinar. So book three was my least favorite, partially because I had complaints about, you know, pacing in book three as well and scenes dragging on too long and stuff like that. But my main reason why book three was lower on my list is because it was primarily plot and world and a big spotlight on Dalinar. So I still had a great time with the character study, but I was missing my other mains. It felt off balance to me. In my mind, I chalked it up to middle book syndrome and I thought, oh, Sanderson had a lot of world to do here. 
let's move on to book th book four and let's get back to the characters. And I actually feel like it was even more of a step down for a character reader, or I guess I can't say a character reader because every character reader is different, for myself as a character reader. The reason is because in book three, we at least had a spotlight on Dalinar. Who do we have a spotlight on in this book? Kind of no one. The flashbacks went to Vinley and Esh and I, but they didn't play a major role in the main plot for the majority of the story. The main plot, there was a big spotlight on Navani and Kaladin, and I loved that, which we'll get into. But there, it, it, it felt split between Navani and Esh and I and Vinley. And so I didn't really feel like we had a character study, which is what I've come to be used to with this story, a big spotlight on one character and digging deeper into them. We didn't have that in this book like we've had in others. So not only did we have three of our main characters take a big step back, but also where did the spotlight go? Kind of in several places, which means that it didn't really shine completely brightly on any of them like it has in other books. So for me, I was a little bit bummed. I think this could have easily been solved by making this Navani's book. Um, I I think that Vinley and Esh and I, I think he did a great job with them, but I don't think they needed to have a flashback book. Uh, we got a lot of depth out of them, which I loved, but a lot of the information that we got from Vinley and Eshenai's and chapters, we could have gotten from context or we've kind of already gotten in other books. It was just more details on those things. Did we need it? I guess I don't know because I haven't finished the series. I don't think so. However, with the amount of focus Navani got in the story, which I love because she's always been one of my favorite characters, the amount of focus we got on Navani, getting backstory on her upbringing and on her marriage and the damage of that abusive marriage and, and her being beat down and then her arc into gaining confidence would have been such a great story on the levels of Kaladin, Shalon, and Dalinar. It could have been this great character study along with this incredible plot and this deepening of world. And that would have made such a big difference for me. And every reader's individual, and I know people are gonna disagree with me on that, and that's fine. But that was one of the big things that I just felt was missing out of this book is we've had three <laughs> books of great story plus great character study. And in this book, we got a lot of character depth, but I was missing this. Don't get me wrong, I also don't like that Shalon and Adolin and Dalinar, I felt, did not have enough page time in this book. So that's part of my complaint too, but I think that I could have said, ah shucks, I wanted more of them, but oh my goodness, this great story from Navani, and I would have been on a similar level to how I felt about Oathbringer. Okay, my next pro was characters that he did focus on, man, he did a good job. So. I've kind of already touched on this. I love Navani's character. I've always loved Navani's character. She's always been one of my favorites and getting this much page time with her just made me love her that much more. She's such a strong, powerful, smart, incredible woman and I loved the focus we got on her. I also really enjoyed the focus we got on Kaladin. At first it took me a little bit of adjustment because man, watching that man get kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked and I happened to be reading this book at a time when I was being kicked and kicked and kicked by life and really struggling <laughs> with my mental health. And so reading Cal struggle this hard while I was struggling that hard, oof that hit me hard. But as always, Sanderson has this massive emphasis on digging really, really deep into the depths of Kaladin's depression, which I know tons of people have found very, very relatable. And I mean, I enjoyed Cal's entire arc in this book. I loved most every moment that I spent with Kaladin and Navani. Vinli and Esh and I, I also mentioned in in the um, in the spoiler-free review that I think he did a great job with those chapters. I think this is the thing that people have disagreed with me on the most. A lot of people didn't like Vinli and Esh and I's chapters. And this is something I wanna clarify because I did just say that they didn't, they didn't need a flashback book, or at least that's how it seems to me at this point. And I still think that. Um, my thing is I didn't want this to be their book. I was really disappointed when I found out that this was gonna be their book. And I wanted so many different people. I had a list of people that I would have rather had a flashback book than them. And knowing that I went into this with such low expectations, I was actually really impressed with how well Sanderson did with it. He deepened their characters 
really, really well and made me way more attached to them than I have been in any other book. But uh, as far as content, not, now I'm talking about, again, characters. I'm talking about getting attached to characters. And I think Sanderson did a great job with that. As far as content, did we need this much from them? I would say no. But again, I don't have full context for the series. I don't actually know that. Okay, my last con in that video was emotional stakes. So, okay. What I mean by that is that I felt like there were a lot of, there were several scenes in this book that I felt were supposed to be high emotional moments, but I didn't feel them because I don't actually feel like there are a lot of stakes for our main characters. Um, in a lot of ways. I don't mean in every way. Don't take this as a sweeping blanket statement. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I don't mean in every way. There are a lot of high stake moments in this book, but there are also several that are meant to be high stakes that I just didn't feel at all. One of which would be when Kaladin was falling and he was giving up and Syl was forgetting and oh my goodness, they were going to die and everything was going to be ruined. And, and then Kaladin says his fourth ideal and then they go off to save Cal's dad. And, you know, it was really well written. Don't get me wrong. I, I thought it was really, really well written, especially since Li um, Lyft had just been cut up and Teft had just died. And then this happens and it was like, boom, 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 one thing after another, friggin' Moash. And, and then this fall happens and it was very well written and it was very theatrical and I was really in the moment, you know? Like, I, I really enjoyed reading it. But, at the end, when Cal said his fourth ideal and then went off and, and saved the person he needed to save, it was kind of just, I guess I just came out of it feeling like, I mean, yeah, of course. Of course it was gonna end this way. Like, it was never gonna end any other way. There, of course he was going to say his fourth ideal and then go and go save the person he needed to save. You know, it just, it, it went exactly the way it was of course going to go. I felt the same way with Adolin's trial. It was really well written. And I really enjoyed reading it. And there were so many great lines that I loved reading and horrible scenes. And Sanderson did a great job with that. But Adolin was always gonna win that trial, you know? He, he was never not gonna win. There was only one outcome. And things like that, where it feels like these are supposed to be high stakes moments, but I know exactly how they're gonna go. They go the way they're predictably going to go. Of course it'll end up this way. So when these characters are in these high stake moments, I don't actually feel, I mean, they're really well written and I get into the scene, but I don't actually feel tension because I'm not afraid they're gonna fail. Again, don't take this as a sweeping statement. These characters do fail in some areas of the story. There are high stakes in some areas, but they're also big, big moments where I don't feel stakes at all because it's kind of, it's gonna go the way you expect it to go. Now, I will say, I don't necessarily think the series as a whole has been high stakes in that way from the beginning. There are very few high stakes scenes where I'm thinking, oh my goodness, are they gonna fail? Are they gonna die? Is it gonna go this way? But what I said in my spoiler-free review is that there were high stakes for me in book one and in book two, book three there was less and book four there was even less. And I think the reason I feel that way is because at this point in the series, nearly 5,000 pages in, which is book four for, for this, but for most series that'd be book six or seven, I feel like we shouldn't I feel like we should have higher stakes in this. We should have moments where I'm actually wondering, is this not, is this gonna go a different way? And sometimes it does. I guess, I guess not having these high stakes moments that always go the way, not always, having these high stakes moments that go the way you expect them to go is starting to feel stale to me. And I know Sanderson is capable of doing big things at the end of his series. I don't wanna say spoilers for other series here, um, I just know he can. So I do think that book five is going to be an improvement on this. But for book four, I just felt like we were at a point where I, I needed more out of, out of high stakes situations. I'm gonna give another example that's a little bit different and that's Shallan. Actually, Shallan's entire arc in this book, I didn't love the execution of. So it's mentioned a few times near the beginning and maybe once or twice in the middle, I'm not really sure, that formless is, is, coming. It's hinted that there is a fourth personality that is rising up and Shallan and Vale 
and uh, Radiant have a good chemistry among them and they found a good system among the three. But there's a fourth personality that's coming up that's concerning them. And it's mentioned a couple times and that's cool, that's interesting. And then we get to the end of the book. Shallan's not been in the book very much. She's, we're at the end of the book and we have a line that says that um, Formless, uh, Adolin says that he needs Shallan and Formless says, yes, Shallan really is the best for this job. I hope it won't be a problem that she's never coming back. And man, that was such a great line. And I remember freaking out because I thought that Formless had forced her way to the front and taken Shallan. Remember that scene when Sixteen showed up and Shallan grabbed Radiant and shoved her down and forced her to stay down and went after Sixteen and Radiant was beating against the metaphorical walls and freaking out because Shallan was containing Radiant without her consent and not letting Radiant come to the surface. I thought that was happening here. I thought Formless had done this and Formless was taking over, which is what was kind of hinted at what was coming. But then the very next page, Vale's like, I know you're actually Shallan. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, that was like whiplash a little bit. We we had a little bit of buildup and then we had the big moment and then instantly Sanderson's like, but no, just kidding, made you look. And then, and then Vale and Shallan are having this conversation. And I remember there was, the way it was written, it was like, formless is Shallan, Shallan is formless. It was like with dot dot dots and spacing and it was written as if it was supposed to be this big emotional moment and I was just like am I supposed to feel something right now? I mean it was mentioned a couple of times and then you let me believe it for one page and now it's like I'm supposed to feel this big emotional moment of Shallan and formless are the same person but I didn't even believe it long enough for it to have any impact on me now. Now don't get me wrong, I loved what we got out of that chapter, learning that Shallan had another sprint at some point and killed that sprint. I mean, it was great. I loved the information that we got out of it. I, did, did we need it at this moment? I mean, did it did it really affect anything? Uh, Adolin still went through with the trial. Shallan didn't even tell Adolin, even though Adolin was like arguing that the people aren't going to harm the Sprin and no one had killed a Sprin. And Shallan's over here like, I'm not gonna tell you that I did. And I thought that it would affect the trial somehow, but it didn't affect the trial at all. So we got this information, which was cool, but it didn't have very much buildup. The payoff was so abrupt that there really wasn't enough payoff. The information was great, but then there wasn't fallout either. <laughs> so Shallan's whole arc, I just didn't like the execution of it. I I wanted, I think she needed a lot more pay, a lot more page time in order for that to actually feel good. It was so rushed. It was so rushed. Okay, I, I think I've yammered on about this enough. I just feel like the emotions that I'm supposed to be getting out of certain scenes, I'm not getting out of them in this book. Um, not all of them, don't get me wrong. I was very emotional in many scenes. I'm just saying that there are the emotional stakes and the emotional payoffs that I'm supposed to be getting. There are distinctly large scenes with large moments that I just, I wasn't, I wasn't getting out of all of them. Some of them, yes, some of them, no, and I was bummed. <laughs> anyway, this has been a very long review that I meant to be short and concise, but that's me going into a little bit more depth about my pros and my cons. I feel like I need to reiterate this because holy cow, so many people came out of my spoiler-free review thinking I hated the book, which I don't, I don't know what I did wrong, but I didn't hate the book. I don't know, I didn't, didn't hate the book. I actually really enjoyed it. I had so much fun reading this book. I I enjoyed reading this book so much. It wasn't like Oathbringer where there were chunks where I was legitimately bored. It was more like um, there were things that I wanted to tweak, but I still really enjoyed it. There were just there were just certain things that I was just like, ah, ah, shucks, didn't work out for me. But there were so many things that did work out for me. I mean, this was a fantastic story and I really, really enjoyed reading it a lot. I just, there were certain things that I had mixed feelings on, so my rating reflected that. But I still had a great time reading this book. The Stormlight Archive is still one of my top five favorite series of all time. 
I love this series and I still highly recommend it, but you don't need to know that because if you're here, you've read it too. Anyway, that's me expanding a little bit more on the pros and the cons. I will hopefully have a spoiler filled big discussion with Corey eventually down the line when he reads it, but I don't really know where that is, when that will be. I don't want to make him read it when he's not in the mood for it. I'd love to continue chatting with you about this in the comments. I post videos Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.